Welcome to the video. In this video, we're gonna go over a complete guide on different property types that you can house hack. So if you're looking to house hack and reduce your rent prices and maybe get into your first investment property, this video is for you. We're gonna go over a complete guide of the pros and cons of each property type. So let's dive right into the video. Welcome to the video. And if you're looking to house hack, you're probably on the right path. House hacking can be a tremendous way to boost your financial future. I started house hacking about two years ago. Before that, I was renting. And in fact, I was actually renting the same property that I bought and house hacked. So I'm also a real estate agent and a team leader, and I help other people with house hacking and getting into their first investment property and all that kind of good stuff. So I have a lot of experience doing this. I've done it myself, and I've helped a lot of friends do the same thing with tremendous success. So in this video, I'm gonna go over my opinion on the best property types to house hack, and I'm just gonna break down the pros and cons of each to give you some ideas on which property types you might wanna start looking into for your first house hack. So let's dive right into it. I have some different property types basically outlined here. And um, I'm just gonna go through them one by one. So the very first one is a condo. Now you might be wondering, is a condo a good thing to house hack? You know, maybe you want something with less maintenance. Maybe you don't want to mow the lawn. Maybe you want to have someone else take care of the roof. And you're like, a condo might be the perfect alternative. Well. In my opinion, I would stay away from it. Here's why. First and foremost, you have an association and the association can dictate if you could rent that unit out or not. Secondly, you have a situation where you're gonna have to live in the same living quarters as the person that you're house hacking with. So maybe you buy a two bedroom condo, you rent out one of the bedrooms, you live in the other bedroom and that's your house hack. Now, this could work theoretically, but you're gonna to have to share a common living area like the kitchen, the living room with your tenant. And unless you know the tenant really well, you might not feel that comfortable doing that. So condo house hacking, in my opinion, isn't the best thing. And I personally would stay away from it, but some people do it and they have great success with it. And they really love this option because a lot of condos are lower priced than single family houses and multifamily houses. So they feel a little bit more comfortable getting started with that and getting a feel for how house hacking works and how managing tenants work. So this could be an option. Again, I personally don't like investing in condos because you've got the association fees, you've got the association telling you what you can, you can and can't do. And then condos typically are the slowest to rise in price and the first to go down in price when a market correction happens. So I personally would stay away from them, but I do know a lot of people that do invest in condos and they, they, they personally love it. So it could be for you, it's just not for me. That's my two cents on it. Next, we have single family homes. Now this, in my opinion, is a better option than a condo. Not the best option, but I think it's still a great option. Single family homes, uh, typically, you know, they, they tend to do pretty well in the category of appreciating. Um, there's a lot of demand still in the market for single family homes. You have big corporations buying a lot of single family homes for rentals. Um, so there's a lot of key indicators pointing to single family homes being a good thing to get into. But you gotta keep in mind, you're still sharing living space. So if you buy a three bedroom single family home and you're gonna live in one of the bedrooms, share the common area and rent out the other two rooms in a house hack situation, you know, you gotta keep in mind, you're gonna have tenants that are gonna be in the same area and you, you might want your personal space back at, at some point in time. So in my opinion, it's not ideal, but I do like single family homes and eventually, you know, you could turn it into a short term rental. So eventually after a period of time of living there, you know, two or three years, you're there and you eventually move out and move into your next house. Maybe you turn it into an Airbnb or a VRBO, like, you know, short term rentals typically throw off good cash flow. So it could be a good thing. You just have to be careful. You have to crunch the numbers and you have to ask yourself if you want to live with tenants in the same living quarters. So. That's the single family home. That's how that's done. Next is the duplex. So this is what I did. Um, I bought my first duplex in 2019, right? Um, late 2019. And it was, it was probably one of the best things I've ever done. 
Um, buying a duplex has been great. Um, I happen to get a townhouse style duplex, so it's it's split in half and it's pretty much like a home. You know, there's, there's three beds in each unit. It's big, it's got hardwood floors, it's a townhouse, so there's two levels to it. It's got a two car garage. It's a great place. So finding a duplex that is kind of set up like a single family house and has the feel of a single family house, but you still have separate living quarters and you, you get rent every month from your tenant can be a really awesome thing. Now, I wouldn't say it's the best way to start house hacking because when I first started before I did my refi and got rid of my PMI, I was still spending some money per month. You know, it was costing me some money out of pocket every month to live here. Um, it still cost me a little bit out of pocket to live here. Um, either way, it was a lot cheaper than, than renting. Um, fun fact, they actually used to rent this place. I bought it off the landlord. Um, but, you know, it, 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 would, it just depends. You gotta crunch your numbers because it could cost you some money to live in a duplex. You only have one rent coming in and um, the numbers might not work out where you're going to live free or very close to free, especially with interest rates going up like they are now. It could be a little bit more challenging. But duplexes, if you want a house hack and you don't mind putting a little bit of money out per month to live in a really awesome living situation, might be for you, it might be something to look at. You know, this is the perfect compromise be between a single family and, and doing something like a big four unit or a three unit where you're managing multiple tenants. So this can be a really great thing. Um, this, this is phenomenal. I think this is like really, really great. This is a great way to get started, especially if you really do want that single family, but you want the extra cash flow coming in um, from, from that other tenant that's next door. So that's, that's a good thing. Next, we have three units. So three units are great. I actually helped a really good friend of mine get into a three unit. It's been phenomenal. Um, three units, you have a higher chance of living for free. You know, basically have two rents coming in, counteracting that cost of your expenses, your mortgage, all that kind of stuff. Um, three units can be a great thing. You're gonna have to manage two tenants, but when you move out of a three unit, typically your cash flow will be pretty good. Again, reference my video about running numbers on real estate and, and house hacking. Um, that video will give you some ideas on how to crunch numbers and how to figure out if you should consider moving forward or if you should skip the deal completely. So check that video out. But three unit properties can be fantastic. You know, I know a lot of friends that have bought these, they got started investing in real estate with three units. Eventually they bought more property and it was their gateway to become a real estate investor. And it has worked out really, really well for them and it's changed their lives and their financial future. So three units are a great thing. Next we have fourplexes. So if I was gonna start over again and I didn't happen to find this unicorn of a deal, I would probably have started with a fourplex. Um, one of my best friends just bought a fourplex. I actually helped him get that deal and secure it. And um, he, he loves it. You know, he has three other rents coming in. Um, he's living for free pretty much. And when he moves out, eventually it's gonna turn into a really good cash flow generating asset. So fourplexes can be phenomenal. And the best thing about a fourplex is if you start with a fourplex, you can jump to a three unit next, and you can jump to a duplex next. Then you can jump to a single family next. Before you know it, you've acquired a whole portfolio of property by house hacking. So doing this can be a great thing. Um, starting with a fourplex is phenomenal and it's probably going to give you your best odds of cash flowing and living for free because you have three other rents coming in and the fourplexes that I've seen in my market are typically not much more expensive than the three units. I think people get spooked by the fourplex. I don't know why, but the three units tend to trade in the same area as the fourplexes in my particular market. So getting that extra rent could be a game changer, especially if you're house hacking and you don't mind managing three other tenants. Last but not least, we have the five unit plus. Now this is commercial real estate. Uh, five units and more is commercial. So I would suggest, unless you have a big deposit and you have experience, which if you're trying to house hack, you probably, probably don't, you're probably just getting started. I would stay away from this because commercial real estate you're not going to be able to typically put down that three and a half percent down or find some of those zero down first time home buyer programs that make house hacking such a powerful tool. And you're gonna have to put down, you know, 25% usually. So 25% of a 400,000 or $500,000 asset is, is quite a bit of money. 
And typically the loans on these, they're, they're usually not fixed rate loans. Sometimes they're interest only. So it's just a more complex game that you're playing. And when you're first starting out, I would personally avoid it and go for one of these deals. You know, I would hang out right here if you can um, between the four and the two unit properties. Um, these are typically the best bet for house hacking. Um, single family can be good. Um, I, I would do a single family at some point and then maybe eventually move out of it and turn it into a short term rental and maybe do some Airbnb stuff because uh, I see that as a really good opportunity to get some more cash flow out of the traditional, you know, single family house. But uh, just just, you know, you got to decide if you want to go that route of living with people when you first move in there and do the house hack. So I personally wouldn't want to do that. I like my own space. So I would go between the duplex and the four unit. I'd stay away from the five unit. I definitely stay away from the condo. You know, that's just my opinion. Um, you, you might think differently and that's fine, but that's the pros and cons of each property type. And if you have any questions about the property types and house hacking, definitely reach out to me. I've done it myself. I'm also a licensed real estate agent and I've helped many clients do this same strategy, get into their first house and stop paying rent. Because at the end of the day, paying rent is paying somebody else's mortgage down and you're just building wealth for somebody else. Now, there's a time and a place to rent. If you're gonna be very mobile and you're gonna live in a place for maybe six months to a year, maybe you're traveling for work, that's not bad. But if you're gonna be in the same city or the same town for many years and you're just paying rent and paying rent and paying rent, it might not be the smartest thing in the world. So if you like this video, definitely hit the like button and subscribe. We come out with real estate content for real estate entrepreneurs on a weekly basis. So thanks so much for watching and have an awesome day.